Hey, beautiful day. Um, you know, I took this digital readout off that axis and lathe I bought from Yoder Machinery. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this, uh, it's a two axis readout, and I'm going to put it on that old Hardens chucker. I think it would serve me better. And uh, for uh, the Axelson gets a travel dial. It's just, uh, I just think it's a ways for me to put a digital readout on a 1941 Axelson when a travel dial is just dandy. And these travel dials are pretty cool. See, it's got a little wheel here, right there. And you turn that little wheel and see that, that uh, hand moves in this dial here. And the way it's calibrated is that wheel is beveled on the face. So the mount tilts it a little bit and you test it going back and forth uh, and, uh, with like a, a standard, like a five inch uh, micrometer standard. And then you adjust the tilt on it so the wheel, the bevel on the wheel's just right so it matches the standard. And that's how these work. Thought you might think that's pretty cool. There's not very moving, many moving parts, not a lot to go wrong with this, and no batteries required. Okay, let's get into the shop. Got things going in there to talk about. Okay, here we go. I got my coffee. Watch your step, very dangerous, very dangerous. Look at that drill. You gotta have a ladder for it. Okay, back here, look at that little truck. Watch that stuff, look at that. Here we go. We have arrived. Okay, I'm gonna shut this off real quick. And uh, this is an old machine. <laughs> and I found if you put it in neutral, get the chain oiler going and run it for a while, it oils all the gears up on top and when you start it up, it doesn't sound like a box of rocks. Okay, let's get back over here where we were. And I'm gonna hook you on this tripod. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about um, these gauge rods and, and setting stuff up with them, okay? Now, I had the crappiest mount last time and it came in an old, the old kit for that Ames. I was using this, just totally, it's horrible. But I got the little Noga thing on there. And man, that thing's solid, you know, it's really good. You know, I can move the, you know, fiddle with it a little bit and see it settles in and set the dial to zero. Now let's play around with this just a little bit more. I gotta do something here with this so I can get around this. Hold on. Let's see if I can get you tilted so you can still see. Kind of have to do a little bit of a compromise here. I mean, I got to get around too. Okay, I think you can see okay. Okay, now we're watching that drift, remember? Let's get it, let's, let me set it on zero here. And I'll set this to five again, or uh, two to zero. There we go. Two zero. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a ten thousands, and uh, that should get that a full turn. Okay, here we go. Hold on, let me uh, figure out what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. Wasn't quite ready there, had a little uh, play to take up. Okay, now should be able to do it. These uh, little dials are kind of hurt, hurt from my big fingers. Okay, I'm gonna move it 10 thousandths. And that is right there. Where'd we end up? Oh! <laughs> Let's try that again. Let's, Let's try that again. Okay. Where are we here? 
here. Get that on zero. Okay. Okay. Here we go. 10,000. Right there. No. <laughs> okay, there's quite a few things going on here. And, uh, okay, I'm going to show you one more thing. One more kind of cool thing. Let's see. Let's see how this is uh, doing this way. Okay, I'm going to go to zero. It's still doing the drift. Do you see that? Okay, so I'm going to set it before zero. Just before zero. See if it'll drift. Okay, we're on zero. Okay. Now, if I can do this, let me have to slip under. See if I can get there. Got there. Okay. Now here, okay, we're in. How are we look on zero? Oh, we drifted another tenth, didn't we? Okay, but we'll call that zero. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the machine. You know, that had enough time. It had enough time to settle in. And it's not drifting, that's pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to adjust it with the machine running. I'm going to come back to zero. You see, it's a lot easier to uh, hit your mark with the machine running because it's got that vibration that allows uh, everything to settle out. Okay. We'll shut this off. And don't forget to turn off the oiler. back around here uh, so when you adjust um, for a cut only do it with the machine running otherwise uh, the stick slips gonna catch up to you from the jolt of the machine and the vibration so that's about the best tip out of this whole deal and I want to get more into using these measuring rods. Okay, I'm going to get detached here and talk about that real quick. Now, this machine, um, it's an antique and old machine, and it's a, a heavy-duty machine. Number two... Brown and Sharp, 1940 war machine, a plain standard. This thing weighs 5,000 pounds. It has an unusually wide base. It, it's just an incredible machine. And it seems like the overarms are extra long on this thing, too. Um, the thing about it... Whoa. That guy, someone stole his catalytic converter. Oh, it's a hardly old Abelson, wouldn't you know it? Okay, what do we got here? Okay, you can see these dials here, and it's, and it's a, a quarter inch per turn. So, you know, the discrimination is just not that great on, on the dials anyway. So, you can still uh, position accurately using a setup like this using end measuring rods and the best way to set them up this is just kind of makeshift this is actually a coolant groove and you can attach um, 
I'm going to fabricate these parts and uh, at the junkyard they had some extruded aluminum angle, small stuff, and some stainless. And that'd be perfect for attaching to this to capture these, okay? Now, you, the way they did it, there, there's, uh, were, was factory attachments and e even other companies came up with attachments that even did this better by using gauge blocks in a dial indicator. Oh, and one more thing about this dial indicator. Now, this is only going to be accurate if you, all, if you use the, I mean, high accurate is if you only use the dial indicator to get zero, right? Any changes you make, you should make with the, uh, uh, with the micrometer's head. Let's say you want to add five thousandths. Do it with the micrometer's head and not with the dial indicator, see? You know, that way you maintain the high accuracy. Like using gauge blocks and an indicator on the surface plate. Okay, now I'm going to get back to um, over here. Um, now this is where the, nor uh, the normal uh, stops, mechanical stops for the, uh, 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 you know, for the table travel. So you mount a setup under here for these, then over here on the knee, you do the same thing on that stop system, okay? Well, I'm out of time, and I will be back. Thanks for looking at this one.